So I would like to welcome Dr. Sarah to today's talk. Uh, she's a Malaysian and Australian certified public accountant, as well as a registered Chinese medicine practitioner in Australia and Malaysia. She has a double degree in Chinese medicine and a master of research. Dr. Sarah has more than 15 years of experience in Qigong and has conducted many public Qigong workshops over the years. And we are so, so happy that she has the time today to share her great knowledge with all of us. So, Dr. Sarah, are you ready? You need to unmute yourself. Yes. Yeah, she's coming. Yeah, wonderful. Let me share my screen. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, it's my screen. Okay, hi everyone. Okay, so today the workshop is on the holistic and natural way to total wellness through or with Qigong. Qigong is actually one of the modalities of Chinese medicine used for health enhancement and as well as health maintenance for thousands of years. So in Chinese medicine, total wellness can be achieved through the concept of uh, health preservation as uh, uh, described in Huang Di Neijing. Let me go through the... As described in Huang Di Neijing, one of the uh, four major um, Chinese cl uh, medicine classic. So in Huang Di Neijing, it states that to... <coughs> it states that if you are able to uh, avoid pathogens in a timely manner and stay in good spirit, in calm and peace, then you will be able to ensure the smooth flow of the true or zhen qi in the body and retain your essence and spirit within. And when you do all this, then how could you possibly fall ill? So here I would like to uh, mention two important elements in the phrase of uh, health uh, preservation. Firstly is the avoidance or management of pathogens in a timely manner. And secondly is, uh, is the most important uh, as well is to maintain or keep yourself in good spirit, meaning uh, always have a try as much as possible to have a stable mental state. So with these two, you should be able to make sure that your flow of the qi in the body is smooth and clear. And as we know in Chinese medicine, we always say that the most important thing in our health is to ensure the smooth and clear circulation of blood and qi in the body. Because most of the illnesses actually resulted from uh, what we call a blockage or stagnant uh, stagnation of the blood and qi circulation in the body. And the other thing is that with the, if you are able to do both these, you will be able actually to keep the essence, your body essence, as well as your spirit uh, within the body or within yourself. The spirit here we refer to in Chinese medicine is caution, which is uh, supposed to be the highest level of our consciousness. So, before, uh, so with this, then you will be able to avoid all illnesses. And uh, just, uh, just to highlight before we go on, you can see that sometimes I put in the Chinese word because this is the uh, extract of the old language in, in Chinese. And uh, just for the benefits of those who are able to read Chinese, because sometimes the translation, no matter how much we try to translate, we may miss out. Uh, the real, uh, the actual meaning. So this is just for the benefit of the those who are able to um, read Mandarin. So now we would, uh, I would like to just go through the pathogenesis of uh, formation of lung according to Chinese medicine theory. So as we mentioned just now, pathogens are the cause of uh, of our illnesses. Well, so in Chinese medicine, we have a uh, two main categories of uh, 
pathogens. So the first one is the external pathogens. External pathogens actually refers to, firstly, we refer to the six excesses, which means <coughs> uh, this actually, uh, we are actually referring to the uh, extreme uh, climatic changes in our environment, such as in Chinese medicine, we always have what we call the wind, the dampness, the heat, the cold. Um, uh, let me see what else. Wind, dampness, heat, cold, and also uh, dryness and summer heat. So these are the external pathogens that can actually attack and invade our body and make us ill. And it, external pathogen also includes some uh, environmental carcinogens, uh, such as uh, exposure to radiation, or even um, we have like what, the, what we are having now, the COVID uh, viruses uh, floating around and also uh, bacteria floating around us. So all these are the external pathogens. And to actually to manage external pathogen, is much, much easier than managing internal pathogens. So in Chinese medicine, internal pathogens actually refers to, uh, in modern uh, language, actually is uh, what we say, unhealthy lifestyle. So unhealthy lifestyle include unhealthy diet, uh, emotional disturbances or emotional overstrain, or some uh, various types of physical overstrain. And uh, for the purpose of this workshop, I would like to highlight about emotional disturbances uh, impact on our health. Because in Chinese medicine, we always believe that emotional uh, disturbances are the main cause of our illnesses or our uh, health uh, issues. And uh, in Chinese medicine, there are basically five main internal, uh, sorry, uh, five main emotion, which is actually correlated to the five chang <coughs> or yin organs in the body. So these five main, uh, <coughs> main uh, or major uh, classification of uh, emotion and the related organ is uh, actually um, sorrow. Sorrow is actually connected to our lung. And then we have uh, joy is connected to our heart. And then we also have worry, which is connected to our spleen. And anger, which is related to our um, liver. And then the last one is fear or fright, which is connected to our kidney. So this, um, this uh, various emotion, when we have this extreme emotion, it will actually directly impact the function of the various organs in the body. So, but for this uh, purpose, we are for this class, we won't go into details. So when we have all these pathogens that we don't manage uh, well, or we don't manage in a timely manner, then it will attack the vital qi in the body, or we call the chen qi in the body. And when the chen qi in the body is insufficient, then it will impair our internal organs. So in Chinese medicine, we have the five main yin organs and the six fu organs. So basically, uh, it's referring to the most of the organs in the body. And when these uh, five, uh, when these internal organs are impaired, what will happen is that it will lead to the uh, first thing, it will cause the qi flow in the body to be stagnated. And when the qi flow in the body is stagnated, what happens is that it will actually, in Chinese medicine, we always say we need the qi to move the blood. So if the qi cannot flow, then it cannot move the blood. So if the blood cannot flow, what will happen? It will start to, right? It will start to uh, clot up. And over time, it will start to clot. And when it is clotted, when it has clotted, and then if you still don't take care of it or don't attend to it, over time, it will start to accumulate and bind into and form various types of growth or lumps, such as cysts or fibroid or, <coughs> or even a tumor. So this, uh, this is one of the pathway of the pathogenesis of lung formation according to Chinese medicine theory. And 
Another pathway is when these five, <coughs> these internal organs are impaired, it will result in phlegm formation inside the body. And again, the same thing, if this phlegm is not <coughs> dissolved or, or, or cleared off in time, then over time it will start to congeal and again it will accumulate and bind to become or to develop into uh, lumps like lipoma or even or even uh, uh, like we mentioned I mentioned just now like a, a cyst or fibroid or tumor. So how does qigong come into play here? Qigong, as you know, is also referred to as a mind body exercise as it actually involves the relaxation of the mind through various um, type of forms of visual, uh, visualization and the movement or exercise of the body uh, through uh, different types of slow moving gentle and flowing movement to harmonize our emotion and regulate the chi and blood in the system when this is uh, done, it will actually help to, first, it may help to prevent or slow down or avoid the impairment of, the, of our internal organ as well as the chi stagnation and prevent the further deterioration of our health down this pathogenesis uh, pathway. So what is qi gong? in Chinese term or uh, the, the meaning of Qi Gong means the cultivation or the skill to cultivate Qi. And then what is Qi then? Anyone has uh, uh, would like to know or, or would like to share your understanding of what is Qi? If not, then uh, we will go to what is Qi. Qi is actually a natural phenomena. So it is just like gravity, like magnetic field, like radio wave. It is around us everywhere. It is inside us, it is outside us, it's in the nature. It's something that you cannot see, you cannot feel, you cannot smell but it is there, just like what uh, all the electromagnetic wave and the gravity, the, the radio wave, they are all around us, but we can't see, we can't feel, we can't touch. So the same applies to Qi. The, the only difference is that until now, modern science has not been able to establish or to sort of calculate or measure the principle of how, uh, what is Qi and how it works because Qi actually can manifest in too many forms and states. So there are so many different types of Qi. Let's go into ourself, just the human being. Inside ourself, there is what we call the prenatal Qi. Prenatal Qi refers to the Qi which is from the moment you are conceived. And this prenatal chi will sustain your, low, the, your whole life process from the development, growth, aging, and death until the, the death. Then that is when the prenatal chi is uh, depleted. And since we have prenatal chi, we also have what we call the postnatal chi. And the postnatal chi is actually the chi, uh, the chi which is transformed from the food, the air, the vitamins, the supplement or the drinks that we take in. And this postnatal chi has to work together with the prenatal chi to further transform into many, many other types of chi in the body. For example, we have what we call the defensive chi, which is the chi that's supposed to uh, protect us from invasion of external pathogens. And we also have uh, other types of chi, like I think the most uh, the most uh, popular or well-known is what we call the meridian chi, which is the chi that runs along our meridian system. And then we also have even each and every internal organ has its own chi. So 
we can see that just within the human being, there are so many types of chi. Then what about nature? So nature is the same. Everything in the nature has its own chi. So like the, the animals, the dogs, the, the cat, they have their own chi. Even the trees and the plants also have their own chi. So that's why you can see, I'm not sure in KL, I'm not sure about KL, but in Penang, uh, where uh, there are many parks, we can always see a lot of people nowadays, it's very uh, popular. There are people practicing in the morning in the park and then they surround the, uh, they surround the big tree while they practice to tap the, the chi of the trees. And then like some like to just, uh, just uh, practice around uh, in a very nice environment like uh, just next to the river or next to the uh, hills or mountain because there also it has its, uh, has the own uh, the chi of the nature or the landscape or what we call in Chinese medicine in Chinese we sometimes say oh we want to tap the chi of the landscape it's, it's actually referring to like the feng shui of the of the environment so <coughs> So since there are so many types of chi, how do we know how to tap what type of chi? So, so first of all, if you want to practice, let's say you want to practice chi feng, so you must know what is the purpose and next is uh, what type of chi you want to tap and then what type of method you have to use then only or to practice then only you can tap the chi and achieve your purpose. So it's just like, for example, it's just like, uh, like if you want to receive certain uh, uh, channel, uh, your radio channel or TV channel, you need to tune to specific frequency to receive the channel. So the same apply for chi gong. If you want to tap what type of chi, then you apply what type of chi gong. And just for your emotion, uh, information, actually there are thousands of types of chi feng available. So it depends on what type of chi feng and uh, what is your purpose of practicing. Okay. So, <coughs> so now that we have talked about chi, let's try something. Okay. I would like you to just try out something. And then after that, you'll tell me uh, you tell me after you finish the what we are trying to exper experiment, you tell me what happened. Okay? So, let me see how come I can't get forward. Okay, what you have to do, I'm going to show you the screen. So, what you have to do is, hey, sorry. So, what you have to do is, First of all, just sit up straight, okay? Just sit up straight mm -hmm. and then place, if you are able to, just place both your feet on the floor and then sit up straight like the demonstrator here and relax the whole body. Then after that, you raise your palm up in front of your navel, okay? Can you see that? And then after that, you slowly open out to about your body width and then after that, you bring back both your palms to the center without touching each other. Make sure you don't touch you don't, the, both the palms and the fingers. When it go back into the center, it doesn't touch each other, okay? So you just repeat this. So open out to about your body width and then you just bring it back to the center. Sorry, open out to your body width. Can you see? And then you bring back to the center without touching each other. Okay. So afterwards, I'm going to give the instruction. When I say, when I say kai, because it's one syllable, it's easier. So when I say kai, you open up. Then when I say her, you bring your palm back to the center without touching each other. All right. And what? Uh, and next thing is that. While you are doing this kai he, I'm going to tell you to think of something and you just follow my instruction, okay? That's it, that's all you have to do. First, you have to relax and then just follow the instruction. Are you ready? 
I can't hear anybody, so I would just assume everybody is ready, okay? Okay, just follow my instruction. Okay, sit up straight. Both your feet on the floor. Relax the whole body. Then gently close your eyes. Relax the whole body. Raise the palm up to the front of navel with the palms facing each other. Then open to about your body width. Uh, to the center without touching. Open. Uh, bring back to the center. Uh, So now, while you are doing Kai He, at the same time, pay attention to the space between both your palms and your palms and continue to do Kai He. Kai He. While you're doing Kai He, relax whole body and your arms and your palms and at the same time focus on the, onto the space between both your palms as well as your palms and continue to do Kai He. Kai uh, Okay, now you can stop now and slowly open your eyes. Okay, I would like some uh, response on uh, anyone can just let me know or uh, just share with the group on uh, what you feel. Did you feel anything? Anyone want to share? Okay, so we have here one thing like tingling sensation on both palms, warm in both palms, sensation between palms. I feel some heat on my palms. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, most people, if you are relaxed enough, 
Uh, another person says uh, relaxation, slower breathing, calmness. Okay, so actually, um, by right, uh, if you are relaxed enough, by right, most people will be able to feel something. So, like some, like <clears throat> uh, those who responded, that like you can feel tingling on the palms, or you can feel the warm or heat sensation on the palm or you can feel something in between the palm. Sometimes, some, but some of you may feel like, you know, like there is something in between the palms, like a, a, a resistance or a magnetic force. Like when you want to uh, close the palms, it, there is a resistance. And when you want to open the palms also, there is uh, some resistance. So, and uh, some can even feel uh, numbness on the palms. So all these are actually uh, uh, the sensation of chi with uh, different people because everyone is uh, has different uh, level of sensitivity to uh, to the chi. Then your feeling or your sensation is different. But there are some people who also don't don't feel anything. So if, if you don't feel anything, it doesn't mean that there is no chi. So what you can feel is actually uh, supposed to be the chi, the most, uh, uh, the most exterior level of the chi of the body, which is uh, uh, what we call the defensive chi or the wei chi or protective chi. Because it's the most exterior, then it's the easiest, the most easiest to, uh, to feel. But doesn't, every, everybody has it. It's just that some people, if you are not, uh, not sensitive, you may not feel. So like for myself, I have I could never feel it before, and even until like after a few years after I practice or learn or practice a chi code. So this is just an experiment to just tell you that uh, there is this uh, chi around us inside us. So the only thing is that in the normally you can't feel it. Why? Why you can't feel it? You can't feel it is because your mind is not there. Okay. So this comes with the first concept of Qigong using the mind method. So the first concept of Qigong is that where your mind reach, Qi will reach. So your mind reach, so like just now when you practice, your mind focus on your palms, focus on the space between the palms. Then the Qi is there, you can feel it. But if your mind is not there, then you can't feel it. So this is one of the uh, concepts of uh, chi gong. Okay, then now let's go into definition of chi gong. Let me close that. So chi gong is literally the practice. So you have to remember, you have to practice of internalizing the mind meaning to bring your mind into yourself, to tap chi. So again, uh, as mentioned, there are many types of chi, so it depends on what type of chi you want to tap, okay? So, and this, just these two, these two uh, part actually already explain the concept of uh, what I mentioned just now, where your mind which chi will reach. So in the practice of Qi Kong, you want to bring your mind into the body so that you can bring the Qi into the body as well. Okay, so that's why you see like, um, uh, because most of the time our mind is, is, is not in the body, always is outside the body. So the Qi, your Qi also actually will actually be released up. That's why at the end of the day, you have to sleep so that your mind can come back so that the body can regenerate and uh, uh, but itself. So you, you just think, okay, the moment you open your eyes in the morning, where is your mind? Is it inside your body or outside your body? I think most of us, the moment we open our eyes, our mind is always outside the body. We always think, okay, what I, what I have to do today, I have to go to work, I have to make sure I can catch the, uh, what, what am I going to have for, for breakfast or what I'm 
what I'm going to have for lunch. So every the moment we open our eyes, our mind is always outside. So our the chi of our body also will be expand out. So that's why at night, as mentioned, you have to bring it back. And it's quite difficult for us to always remember to, to you know, sometimes just retain our mind inside our body. That's why we need to uh, practice Qigong. Because during the practice of Qigong, it helps you to bring your awareness back to your body. That's why the inside just now, the Huang Ti Nei Qing, the, uh, the, the phrase about health uh, preservation is, remember the last part is your essence and your mind inside body. So this is a very healthy uh, practice. Okay. So the next one is uh, to tap Qi through various modes to achieve various goals and benefits. So what are the modes of uh, Qigong practice? Basically, actually, there are only uh, there are actually five modes of Qigong practice. One mode is through the mind concept, using your mind. And then another one is using body movement. And another mode, another mode is using the breathing method. And some use the sound method, like they recite or they chant certain sound to uh, activate or vibrate different organs of the body. And then some is uh, using emotion. Of course, this is the more difficult part because they use the emotion to regulate different uh, different organs of the body, like uh, uh, like um, what was mentioned just now. Different emotion is actually connected to different organs in the body, and uh, of course, it doesn't mean that you do in you just use one mode at one time. Sometimes you can. You can combine, you can combine the body, uh, the mind and the body movement mode together or you can combine the mind with the breathing mode or you can combine uh, uh, body movement with sound. So there are various uh, uh, combinations. Okay? But again, the important thing is practice internalizing mind, touch it and through the mode to achieve various goals and benefits. Of course, goals and benefits are basically for health, okay? So now that we have covered uh, Qigong uh, definition, uh, let's uh, try one of the practice, Qigong practice, okay? Okay, I'm going to show you this uh, again, the demonstration. I will explain the step and then after that, we can practice together, okay? Oh, sorry. How come is this one? Okay. So oh. Okay, what you have to do is, uh, as uh, shown here, you just stand straight, feet together if you can, then stand straight, the head is straightened up, and then relax both hands by the sides, then relax the whole body. Then after that, you have to raise the palm up. Okay, you raise the palm, uh, sorry, you raise your arms up, but you visualize that your arm actually stretch all the way to the universe below and then you lift the chi up from the universe below, okay, up, then as if your hand extend all the way to the far away universe to lift all the chi from the universe up, okay, all the way up, up to the universe on Okay, and then after that, then you bring all the chi as if you bring all the chi down from the universe and then to pour it through the body. So when you reach the head, your hand cannot go inside the head. So the hand has to lie down in front of the face, but your mind go inside. Your mind move inside. 
So as if like you bring all the chi and then move it through up the whole body, slowly over your waist area, your abdomen, your mind is inside the body, okay? And then down along thighs, knees, feet, to the bottom of the universe, you visualize the hand extend all the way to the universe below, and then you lift up the chi from the universe again. Up. And then again, you just visualize your chi, the, the hand extending all the way to the horizon, the far away universe, all the way to the top. And then you bring it down again. Again. And then let it flow through the body. Let it flow through the body, along inside the head, the neck. Okay, the chest, down inside the abdomen, thighs, knees, both feet, to the universe below again, and then you bring it up. So you go through this cycle. So when you go through this cycle, you're actually bringing all the chi from the universe and then you bring it up and then you let it flow through the body. So this is the purpose of the practice. Later, we will go into detail why we want to bring this chi to flow through the body and how it can work. Okay, I'm going to just forward and then at the end, at the end, then when you want to end the practice, you just place both palms over, see, place the, both the palms over your navel. So for the ladies, the right palm is inside, for the men, the left palm is inside. Okay? And that's the end. Then, you separate hands and slowly open eyes. So I will just just go through with the with the with the picture then uh, to explain. Then we can try out. So basically, like now when your palm is at the bottom at the side, you visualize it extend all the way to the universe to the universe below, and then you slowly lift up all the chi from universe below, along the far away universe, you can think as far as you can, there is no end to the universe, okay? And then after that, you go up all the way again to the far away horizon universe, there's no end on how far you can go, and then you just bring it down through the body, Okay, so you let the chi, as if you bring the chi and let it flow through the body. So if you're using this set, it's the same thing like you go down to the universe below, lift up the chi all the way along the universe again, and then to the top of the universe, and then you will lift and then bring all the chi down to let it flow through every part of the body. Okay, and then just go through the cycle a few rounds until the end. When you want to end the practice, you just place both your palm, remember both your palm over your navel. Can you see me? So for the ladies, the right palm is the center of the palm on the navel, the other left palm on top of the right palm. And the opposite for the men. Okay. Any question? If not, then we can try out. So far, there are no questions from the people. Uh, somebody I don't know. just asking uh, why they should close the eyes. Oh, 
why they should close the eyes. When you close the eyes, then it's easier for you to focus and concentrate. When you open your eyes, then you tend to, uh, your awareness will always be outside. So when you close your eyes, it's easier for you to think inside the body. Because the eyes is the one that actually control a lot of the chi of the body. So if you close the eyes, then it's easier to bring the chi into the and contain it inside the body. Okay. Is that ready? Are you all ready? If ready, then we can uh, we can uh, practice or uh, can go through one round of practice. And if you're not sure, after the practice, you can uh, just uh, check again. Okay? Okay. So just follow the, uh, the instructor in front, in the, in the screen, and the instruction. If you need to look at the, the, the screen, you can look at the screen. But if you don't need to look at the screen, you understand what I meant just now, then you can close your eyes and practice. up my way. Slightly shift body weight to the front to relax the whole body. Relax both hands by the sides. Relax the chest and the waist. Gently push the waist to the back. Relax the whole body. Gently close both eyes to bring your awareness back into the body. Now, Extend both your arms as if it's extending all the way to the universe below and then lift the chi up from the universe below up, up along the far away universe all the way all the way to the universe on top and then bring all the chi down from the universe to transmit chi down throughout whole body. Continue to transmit chi down, down, down along the head Hands moving outside, mind moving inside, accordingly, down along the neck, chest, down to the waist, along over the lower abdomen, thighs, knees, ankles, heels, both feet to the bottom of the feet to the universe below and continue to lift the chi up from the universe below up along the far away universe lifting all the chi up 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 to the top of the universe again and then bring the chi down to transmit chi throughout whole body bringing all the chi to transmit chi down throughout whole body down along the head Neck, down the chest, waist, abdomen, thighs, knees, both feet to the bottom of the universe below, 
and continue to lift the chi up from the universe below up up moving along the far away universe all the way to the top and then continue to bring the chi down to transmit chi down to our whole body down down along the head mind moving inside along neck chest down to base level lower abdomen eyes knees both feet to the universe below and then lift the chin up again from the universe below up 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 to the top and continue to bring the chi from the top of the universe to transmit down to our whole body down along the head My moving inside head, neck, chest, navel, or waist level, abdomen, thighs, knees, both feet in the universe below and continue to raise the chi up on the universe below up 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 to the top of the universe and then bring it down to transmit chi to our whole body down Now, along the head, again, neck, chest, navel, or mind moving inside, lower abdomen, over thighs, knees, both feet to the universe below again and lift up. The chi from below up up along the far away universe up to the universe on top and continue to bring the chi down from the top to transmit to our whole body down down over it along the neck chest Navel, abdomen, eyes, knees, both feet to the universe below and continue to bring the chi up, up, up along the far away universe 
to the borderless universe, all the way racing up, lifting up to the top again, and then bring it down to transmit down, down to upper body hands down along the head, mind moving inside body, over neck, chest, to navel, to harness chi with both hands, arm overlap on navel, Honest she whole body full of chi chi and blood circulation clear and small body and mind is well and healthy. Separate hands and slowly open eyes. Okay, so that's the one cycle or one round of the practice. Any uh, questions so far? If you have any question, maybe we leave it to the end of the, of the class, uh, of the session. Okay, we'll continue. Okay, so next. Maybe just, maybe just one question because it's so... Uh, just relating to this um, exercise, standing with feet together and eyes closed for so long makes me a bit uh, imbalanced. Can I have my feet slightly open for balancing? Oh, yes. If your feet cannot close together, you can just separate the feet, but just make sure both the feet is uh, parallel, okay? But don't do like this or like this, your feet. Just make sure it's separate and parallel. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. So just now we said, okay, leave the chi out from the universe, all the ways we talk about chi. So what type of chi are we uh, tapping now in this practice? Okay, so the type of chi that we are practicing to tap is called what we call hun yuan chi. And this hun yuan chi is the most fundamental indivisible building block of the universe. So according to the hypothesis of Hun Yuan Chi, okay, and there is no tinier unit of existence in the universe. And this is based on the uh, Tao evolu evolution about the, or, <laughs> the Tao, uh, Tao Te Ching from the Tao Te Ching, the Tao evolution about the origin of the universe. And of course, uh, there are many uh, terms used in the ancient, um, ancient uh, Chinese, uh, uh, throughout the Chinese uh, ancient history, because the history of uh, the um, Chinese uh, 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 culture actually dated back to more than 5,000 years. So there are many uh, different uh, sages that use the different terms to try to explain uh, the state of Tao or the state of origin in the un of the universe. So some call it Hun Yuan Qi, some call it Tai Yi, some call it Tai Ji, some call it Tai uh, Yuan Qi. Okay, but uh, of course all these actually they are referring to almost the same thing. But the most popular uh, uh, phrase used to describe the origin of universe and the evolution of the universe is the one um, <coughs> written by Lao Zi in Tao Te Ching. So in, uh, <coughs> in this, this Lao Zi uh, was talking about the origin state of the universe. So according to him, the universe, actually the original state of the universe is in the state of Tao. And this Tao by its uh, own if, <coughs> um, volition, it can actually generate or evolve into one. And this one also by its own order, by the order of the uh, nat natural order of the Tao, will evolve into two. And then two 
can evolve into tree, tree can evolve into everything in the universe. So now we come to first from one to two. So what are the two? Can anybody uh, want to have a guess? Is the most common uh, uh, concept in Chinese uh, culture or even Chinese medicine. So what are the two? Any guess? Okay, very good. Somebody say yin and yang. Okay, so it's, it's correct. So the two is the yin and the yang. So the yin yang concept is actually uh, the most important concept in our in uh, in the in in the Chinese uh, medicine theory or even in our daily life, because the yin yang concept is actually uh, it's actually reflect every phenomenon in our life. For example, everything in our life has this yin yang concept, like female and male is the yin yang concept. The electricity charge, the electron and proton is the yin yang concept. Even the chemical reaction also need the yin yang concept, the positive and negative charge, okay? So this yin yang concept is uh, actually is about everything in the universe. But the yin yang here is of course the most original, the first state of the yin yang. So from this uh, state one, when it evolved into yin and the yang, and then by itself, it also can evolve into third state. So the third state is the interaction of the yin and the yang interact and become third state. The third state, or uh, what we call substance or whatever you want to call the state, okay? And then this third state, if it, if it interact with yang, it can evolve into the fourth state, which has more yang than yin. And then this is how the, the various elements interact to evolve into everything in the universe. But, but then because of the various uh, stages, they have their different, uh, uh, their different terminology or their different description. Basically, there is not much difference between the state of Tao and one because they are all in a very homogeneous and very stable state and uh, very fine. It's only from one when it evolves into two, there is a differentiation. Okay, so where uh, so where is a uh, Hunyan Chi? Where is the state of Hunyan Chi? Hunyan Chi is where? Is where? So this is the state of Hunyan Chi. It's from the state of one and before it evolved or transformed into yin or yang, this is the state of Hunyan Chi. So the state of Hunyan Chi is very important. We, in our practice, we want to actually a capture at this state because first of all it is going to evolve into yin yang but it has not been transformed so it has the ability or the the inherent uh, 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 ability to transform into yin yang but it has not been transformed so that's why when we tap this hun yan chi into the body everything about our body is also about yin yang so when you tap it into the body Whatever is lacking, if it's lacking in yin, it will replenish into yin. If it's lacking in yang, it will replenish into yang. So it will auto-regulate or self-regulate your body system. So this is based on the theory of the hun yin qi in the qi gong. Of course, when you go further down the line, you may have uh, the, some people may practice the yin yang, uh, the yin yang uh, uh, qi gong. And then you go down further down the line, you may have the uh, the five element qigong, and which I'm sure most of you have heard of it before. The five elements qigong is talking about the 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 wind, the earth, the the earth, the the the, the fire, the five element, the fire and the water and the metal. Again, and this five element is again related to the five internal organs that um, uh, was mentioned just now. So. All, so all the other, uh, other a lot of the other qi gong, they actually they actually practice to tap the qi all further down the line. So the reason in uh, in this hun yan qi, uh, we want to tap this hun yan qi is because it is still very neutral. It's the finest and 
it has not been transformed into yin or yang. So you don't have to worry whether your body is lacking yin or your body is lacking yang. You just follow and then bring it into the body. Follow and bring it into the body, then it will auto or self-regulate itself. So this is the concept, okay? Uh, so I just, this is just to, to, to just to tell, try to, to explain from the modern concept like, you know, we, until now, science have not uh, keep finding smaller and smaller existence in our, in our universe. So from atom now, they find that, oh, smaller unit is gluon, got quark, got electron, and then as it go further and further, they find that there are even smaller and smaller units, the leptons or whatever. So as far as the Hun Yuan Qi theory is concerned, the Hun Yuan Qi is the end really, is the smallest unit that cannot be divided anymore. It's the building block of the universe. So we just want to tap at this level, okay? And uh, this is the uh, Tao Te Ching, as I mentioned, it talked about, it explained about uh, the beginning of the universe or the Tao, or in our case, we say it's the Pun Yuan Qi, that there was a becoming something undefined yet complete before heaven and earth. It is formless and serene, spacious, silent, solitary and unchanging, infinite and eternally present it may be regarded as mother of the universe. So even Lao Tzu says, I do not know its name, so I shall just call it Tao. But in the absence of a better word, I shall call it, name it the infinite. And being infinite, it transcends and flows through everything and everywhere. So it is everywhere. The moment you just think of the universe, is universe, anything outside our body is the universe. You just bring it back into body, then it will, so uh, it will self-regulate. Sorry, I don't know why is this something. Okay, so because it's the origin of universe, no diagnosis, self-regulate or adjustment, and uh, it is uh, supposed to be regulate all the illnesses. Okay, so then we come to the holistic uh, concept of the human and the our health. So. Uh, one of the major principles in Chinese medicine or even the Chinese culture is that we are all a human being. We, as a human being, we are a holistic, we form a holistic uh, unit with, within ourselves, with the society and with the nature. So we, have, uh, we are part of the society. We are part of the nature. Okay, so all these are, we are formed, we are actually a holistic unit. So when we practice this, when we, we actually connect ourselves with the Hun Yin Qi and then bring it through our body, we are, and let it flow through our body, we are actually also at the same time have this connection. We are increasing our connection with, the, with everything in the society, in the nature, based on the holistic uh, concept of human and for our health. So when you are have, you have this connection and uh, 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 this connection as a holistic unit with the society, with your nature, then your health physically and mentally will definitely improve because you don't have that barrier anymore. Everything can flow through yourself and with yourself, within yourself, with the society, with your uh, with your relationship with everybody, with the nature, and everything can flow through. In Chinese, we say tong. Tong means that everything can flow smoothly and clearly, physically and mentally. So that's why we can just practice this and you can practice this all the time and it will help you to make sure everything in the body is flowing well. Okay. Okay, uh, we still have, let me see, we still have about, oh, we still have about 15 minutes, okay. Uh, okay, let's uh, go through the next, um, the next uh, method, uh, Qigong practice, 
uh, method that I'm going to cover because I mentioned in our in the flyer that we will cover two simple practice uh, which you can actually practice anywhere and anytime. Okay, of course, uh, we have the whole set of uh, uh, different, I mean, the whole set of uh, other level of practice, which will take, uh, of course, a longer time to uh, learn and we cannot cover within these two hours. So we'll just cover this very simple practice so that you can uh, do it at home. Okay. So the next one we are going to uh, cover is uh, called wall squat. It's not squatting on the wall, okay? It's squatting facing the wall, okay? So this is a uh, uh, ancient uh, <laughs> palace uh, has been actually kept as a secret of the ancient palace. It's uh, very, actually, I cannot say easy because afterwards, <laughs> I think you after you try, then you'll see whether it's easy or not. But it's very simple and effective. The main purpose of this practice is to loosen our waist, okay, and we are referring to the Mingmen area here, to improve the circulation and correct all irregularity. So the, uh, the, the, the step is very easy. What you have to do is you just squat down all the way, and then when you squat down, you think Tan Tian. And then when you straighten up back, you think Pai Hui, as if the Pai Hui lift you up. Okay, so what is, eh, sorry. Okay, I'm just going to show you how it is done. Ting Tan Tian, up, Ting Pai Hui, down, Ting Tan Tian, up, Ting Pai Hui, down, Ting Tan Tian Up Ting Pai Hui Down Ting Tan Tian Up Ting Pai Hui So <clears throat> again for this uh, squatting is the same at the end when you want to end the practice then you just harness chi with both palms on on top of your navel, okay? So you can see this is supposed to be a wall, okay? It can be, you can face a, a pillar or you, if you cannot, you know, you cannot, uh, you are not able to stabilize yourself, you can face a, a grill so that you can hold on to support yourself or you can face, a, you can hold on to a, a heavy chair and then hold on while you squat down and you lift up, okay? So, <coughs> uh, uh, we mentioned just now Ting Tan Tian and Ting Pai Hui. So where is Tan Tian, okay? So you see, so this is the, the, the uh, just a, a draw, uh, this one of a, uh, the outer shape of a man. So Tan Tian, where is Tan Tian? So this is your navel Tu Chi, opposite point is the Ming Men. So Tan Tian is at the center point, slightly to the back. So this is Tan Tian. And we just call it Tan Tian, but actually this refers to the, actually the lower Tan Tian. So the Tan Tian means it's the Chi center of our physical form or body. Okay, this is the lower Tan Tian. And then uh, another point, that uh, you may want to know is the Pai Hui. You remember it said when you go up, Ting Pai Hui. Pai Hui is from the, if you go from the tip of your ears, where it go up and it go up and meet in the center at the top, okay, then that is the Pai Hui or we call the crown of head. So when you go down, you Ting Tan Tian, okay, when you go up, you think Pai Hui as if the Pai Hui lift you up. And then also important thing is that when you go down, you remember this point is directly opposite uh, Tu Chi. This is called the Ming Men. So when you go down, you have to make sure you push this point. Uh, this point, this Ming Men is the uh, exact location is between your second and third lumbar vertebra. When you go down, you make sure you push this point to the back. 
So that means you push this waist area to the back, okay? And not arch to the front. You have to push to the back because we want to loosen this tan tian area and the min men area. You don't want to compress on this tan tian and the min men area. The min men, min men means the meaning is the door of light. So as you can, uh, here you can see from the name, it's called the door of life. Means it's a very important point. Okay, and we want to make sure that you push this to the back when you go down. So one of the way to make sure that you can push this to the back when you go down is you don't have to stand near to the wall. You just stand a bit back from the wall. Okay, just to show this Ming Men. Okay, is um. Between the, the second and the third number vertebra. Okay, it's one of the points in the governor channel or the two channel. So you make sure this part is pushed to the back when you go down and also when you come up. Okay, so Ming Men is referring to this point. Okay, so I just draw this again. So remember, when you go down, you have to make sure you tuck in your chin, lift up your pai hui, okay? And then make sure that when you go down this ming men, you push the ming men to the back as much as you can, okay? You don't want to arch your ming men. Uh, okay, let me see whether I can draw here to show you. Mm, okay, so here you see, you have to make sure you push to the Ming Men and not this way. This is the wrong one. A lot of the people, when they go down, they tend to do this instead. They arch the Ming Men inside instead. This is the wrong one, okay? You have to do, push it, okay? You have to push it to the back so that it, like, it's trying to bulge out, okay? And then, and then this part, the heels should be flat on the ground, okay? The heels, so don't tilt your heel up. A lot of people, they cannot go down, they tilt your head, their, the heel up. Your heel has to be flat on the floor, okay? And you can just go down, you can, even if you cannot go down all the way, it doesn't matter. You just make sure that your heel is flat on the floor, okay? And then you just go down as much as you can. If you cannot, you are you cannot balance yourself. Go back, go backward a bit, or hold on to something, hold on to something stable to support you. Okay. So remember this part. I uh, just uh, this one. Make sure this is is flat. Don't do like this. This is the wrong one. Okay, so let's try. Are you ready? I'm going to play this again. Uh, so what you can do is you just find yourself, you know, again, if you are not prepared, just, uh, just stand behind your chair or anywhere where you can face something and then you just squat down. Okay. And uh, just follow the instruction, but the instruction is a bit fast. What you can do is you just follow your own speed, okay? If you, uh, if the instruction two times, you just follow your, your own speed one time or so, doesn't matter. But important thing is I just want to make sure that you don't overdo it, okay? Make sure if you cannot balance, you hold on to, you have something to support you, okay? And just go down as much as you can. Don't overstretch yourself, okay? And then just follow the instruction at your own speed, okay? You don't have to follow the speed of the instruction, just follow the instruction on it. Okay, let me see any questions so far in the chat. Yeah, somebody say cannot squat do as as best as I can. Yes, just do as much as you can, okay? I'm just going to play this. 
ินการเขียน up ting ไปเฮ้ down ting ตอนเขียน up ting ไปเฮ้ down ting ตอนเขียน up ting ไปเฮ้ down ting ตอนเขียน up ting ไปเฮ้ Down, ting tan chien. Up, ting bai hui. Down, ting tan chien. Up, ting bai hui. Down, ting tan chien. Up, ting bai hui. Down. Ting tan chien, up. Ting bai hui, down. Ting tan chien, up. Ting bai hui, down. Ting tan chien, up. Ting bai hui, down. Ting tan chien. Up, ting bai hui, down, ting tan chien. Up, ting bai hui, down, ting tan chien. Up, ting bai hui, down, ting tan chien. Up. Ting bai hui. Okay, then you can gather chi with both hands into body. Palms overlap on navel to harness chi. Whole body filled with chi. Chi and blood circulation clear and smooth. Body and mind is well and healthy. Separate hands and slowly open eyes. Okay. So before I go further, I just want to share one video. I hope it's not too long. About um, again the squatting, but in this case, it's a squatting with uh, pressing on the ears. It is just called Super Brain Yoga. We're accustomed to exercise to improve the body, <laughs> but what about working out to improve the brain? This is interesting. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like calisthenics for the cranium. CBS 2's Jennifer Savi has been looking into who is doing this three minute a day brain training and we're fascinated by it, Jim. Yeah, well, people say it makes them smarter, Paul and Laura. It's called super brain yoga, an exercise intended to pump up cell and neuron activity in the brain. Alzheimer's patients, seniors looking to stave off memory loss, and kids in classrooms are among those who say doing it makes them smarter. Now take your right hand, cross over the left side, a medical doctor in Los Angeles prescribes an exercise. Inhale going down, exhale coming up. Not so as patients grow stronger, but so they become smarter. We probably had a C average. I taught him these exercises, and by the next semester, he, he was a completely different kid. His grades had gone almost straight A's. Take your left hand. A teacher in Malibu saw similar improvements in her learning disabled kids. We have kids that have autism, kids that have Asperger's, all different, different needs. They were assigned the movements. Inhale, exhale. Not to shape their muscles, but to sharpen their minds. Yeah, we get smarter and smarter. Good, Brandon. One child used to just stand there and not move. And now I'll ask him to do something and he'll look at me and he'll just take a moment and then he'll do it. A teacher, a doctor. And then you take the right hand and place it over to the left earlobe. 
a Yale neurobiologist. Yes, I do it every day. And an occupational therapist. Blow up. I think this might be the key to help unlock these children. All are among those experimenting with an exercise to increase intelligence called super brain yoga. I would say the super brain yoga is a fast, simple, drug-free method of increasing mental energy. I learned super brain yoga from Master Choa Kaksui, and I noticed in my own life it made a difference. Like I wasn't spending as much time looking for my keys or walking into a room and forgetting why I was there. Yale neurobiology researcher Jean Ang says super brain yoga stimulates neural pathways in the brain by activating acupuncture points on the earlobe. In modern terms, um, the brain is actually lateralized. So holding the left ear actually activates the right brain and holding the right ear actually activates the left brain. Aang says after doing the squatting sequence, EEG scans show the right and left hemispheres of the brain are synchronized. And you're going to bring it across your body. Reina Corturba doesn't need charts and graphs to be convinced. Right she saw the change firsthand in one seven-year-old student diagnosed as emotionally disturbed and dyslexic. Could barely hold a pencil, could barely write, is now in a regular ed classroom without an aid. He's one of the top children in his class. This is a photo of a boy with autism and his mother who says he was transformed after starting super break in yoga. And he would bite, headbutt me, kick me, punch me, run against the wall, headbutt the wall. Since he started the exercise, he's not had one outburst. For a culture accustomed to exercising to get fit, not get smart, yoga for brain power may seem hair-brain. I tell the patients and I tell the parents, you know, this looks a little bit hokey, but the proof's in the pudding, and I've seen it work. Yes, it does seem strange, but the effects are so worth the effort. It's like five minutes a day. And once I got myself the discipline to do it, it made such a dramatic effect in my life that it's, it's like it's a no-brainer. <laughs> Researchers say super brain yoga can help anyone of any age increase their intelligence. The exercise is rather easy to learn, so if you're interested, you can go to our website and we'll show you how you can learn more about super brain yoga. I'm Jennifer Sabi, CBS2 News. Paul, back to you. We're accustomed to exercise. So, okay. So you can see just now, actually, the, it's called super brain yoga. And uh, most of the uh, of what they what was shown there was uh, more have to do with actually with the uh, increasing your mental cognition or uh, mental uh, capacity. I also the other uh, effort is uh, the other effect is that they are pressing on the ears. Okay, so actually this one can be explained uh, by uh, the Chinese medicine theory. So first we go to first of all we go to the uh, squatting down. The importance of uh, squatting down is because <clears throat> we know that you see just now when you did the exercise, when you squat down, you actually you actually stretch your whole backbone. And when you stretch your whole backbone, you actually uh, uh, you're actually exercising your whole backbone and your whole backbone will actually become more uh, flexible. I'm not sure how you all feel. I'm sure those who have tried just now. So when your backbone is flexible, then means it's healthier. Because like a lot of our diseases or our problem all has got to do with the backbone because all our nerve connection actually come through the gap in each vertebra. So when your backbone is not healthy, then it will compress on all the nerve that come out through the vertebra and then it will affect all the different organs in your body and the function of all the organs. So it's very important to make sure that our backbone is healthy. And as you can see, this is the spinal cord that run through our backbone and all the uh, connection of the nerve that supply the different part of the body or the organs. So if any of this connection is uh, affected, then that is where you start to have problem with uh, different organs or different function of the body. And also, this is just to show the, um, the dermatome means that all the nerve come out, it affects which part of, the, of the, our sensation of the skin. Okay. okay. 
And another thing is that you can see that the backbone, our vert, our main, uh, our main, uh, what is called, our main artery and the vena, uh, the, uh, the vena cover actually also run along the backbone also. So by just doing this exercise, just stretching this exercise, you can see you're actually stretching your backbone. You also stimulate indirectly the, the main trunk of your blood circulation. And and from a uh, Chinese medicine uh, and from the Chinese medicine point of view is also because you remember just now we say we had to try to push the Ming Men here to the back. Okay, why is it that we want to push the Ming Men here to the back? It's because inside here is our Tan Tian and Tan Tian is the chi center of our physical form. So when you practice and you try to push this Ming Men up, you are not compressing on the Ming Men. And then this, you are not also, you won't be compressing on the Tan Tian area. Then it's easier for the chi of your body to actually to be stopped here. Okay. And another thing is that Ming Men is actually in Chinese medicine, it refers to the function of the kidney. So function of the kidney, uh, the kidney actually is located slightly above. So in Chinese medicine, the Ming Men refers to the right kidney, the yang side of the kidney. And we know, as I mentioned just now, the kidney is where our prenatal chi is stored. So when you, uh, <coughs> when you uh, make sure that you don't compress on the Ming Men, you don't compress on the prenatal chi, then it will facilitate the conversion of the prenatal chi to the, in our body to go up and then to combine with the postnatal chi and then to, uh, to be transform into other chi into the body. And also when you are not compressing on this, um, on this Ming Men, you actually facilitate the flow of the chi and the blood up and down along the body. Okay, all the way it go up, it can go up and then it can come down. So that's why there are some people where you see that they are, uh, they have like, uh, they tend to have uh, uh, pressure or the face tend to look very flush is because actually the chi are all the or the blood are all um, uh, congested or accumulate in the upper part of the body and it cannot come down is because the movement here is not loosened it's not uh, yeah or compressed so when we exercise this uh, wall squat you want to make sure this area is loosened when this area is loosened, then the chi and blood circulation can go up and down easily. Okay, and another uh, benefit, <coughs> uh, just just want to, just to show like you know in uh, normal uh, our this one we always say that we want to have this four natural curve, but as far as uh, uh, qi kong is concerned, we want to try to reduce this curve. Okay, we want to try to push it to the back as much as possible so that the chi and blood circulation can go up and down. Because this is not what we call the, actually, this is the, the uh, secondary curve. The secondary curve, I think this one is wrong. This one, the lumbar is actually referring to this part. The secondary curve uh, is in the lumbar area and in the cervical area. Whereas the primary curve means you're born with it one is at the thoracic area and the sacral area. So you can see for children, okay, it's always just a, like a C shape, okay? But as you grow and grow, then you tend to have more and more curve, okay? But we try, we want to reduce the, 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 the angle of the curve because the more curve you have, that is where the more problem you have. As you can see, most of our problem actually has got to do with the cervical vertebra and the lumbar vertebra because our curve is not healthy. I'm sure all of you are, most of us will have some problem with the uh, cervical vertebra means that it actually supply to the, our limbs, our shoulders, all the shoulder problem. And also uh, for the lumbar area is where it's supplied to our back, uh, our back ache. A lot of people have back ache. We have the uh, numbness of the leg and all this, all this has got to do with the second uh, secondary curve of our lumbar uh, vertebra where the nerve come up. 
and then when it is uh, perfected, then it affects your sensation. And then uh, you see, as, we, as, as you age, then you see for older people, they tend to, this curve become more and more pronounced. And because this curve go inside, the body has to balance itself. So this curve, the thoracic curve have to go to the back. And the thoracic curve go to the back, then the cervical curve will go to the front. So why, why is it that for elderly people, you tend to have this? So of course, in, in, in Western side or, or conventional side, because osteoporosis. But then in uh, Chinese medicine, we always say it's because of the antian qi and also the kidney qi. As you age, the kidney qi or the prenatal qi also uh, deteriorate or start to deplete. So that's why then you cannot support. And also in Chinese medicine, we say that actually the kidney control or is connected to the marrow. And marrow means what? Marrow means the bone marrow and the brain marrow. So as you age, your kidney function start to deteriorate. Then that's why your brain, your bone marrow also deteriorate. You start to have, uh, uh, you start to have osteoporosis and your brain function, your brain marrow also start to deteriorate. That's why you start to have cognition problem like Alzheimer or dementia or even Parkinson as we age. So if we know how to preserve this kidney uh, function or kidney chi, then it will slow down uh, the development of all these uh, all these problems. And then again, just now you remember the the, the show say about holding the ears because ears is also actually is the external uh, representation representation of kidney. So in like uh, Chinese medicine, as you mentioned, they sound got five organs. So all these five organs have a uh, different part of the body can represent different part of these five organs. And then, okay, this one. And another thing is about this. Uh, this uh, wall squat. So when you squat down, you can see the blue line, the black line in the center. So this is the actually is our uh, governor uh, governor channel, okay vessel. And along this, you have all the points. The governor channel actually control all the yang qi of the body. And then at both sides, you can see the blue line. Okay, all the way the blue line got two line all the way there come down and then down all the way all the way until the toes okay this is the what is the longest meridian in the body is the bladder meridian so when you you actually when you squat down that's why just now i mentioned make sure your 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 heel is on the floor so when you squat down you are actually stretching this meridian line along the way all the way up until your your bai hui. So you are stretching and indirectly stimulating all the points along this meridian line. And especially for bladder meridian, we have a lot of points here we call the shoe point of the of the internal organ that which is actually all these points are connected directly into the internal organ. So when you stimulate all this point, indirectly you're stimulating all the internal organs. So rather than going to acupuncture, uh, like uh, last when we were um, practicing acupuncture, a lot of the time we also actually acupuncture all this point to tonify or strengthen the internal organs. So just by this physical exercise, it looked very simple. Of course, uh, you need to practice. You have so many benefits, and it is also a form of um, a form of uh, weight bearing exercise in the sense that you are actually carrying your weight. And we know weight bearing exercise is supposed to help to improve the the, the bone density as well. So this is a very good exercise for from perspective of qigong from perspective of physical exercise from perspective of improving your uh, your bone density and your cognition function okay so uh how was the 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 practice just now anybody want to share how you feel was it easy
Let's see. Let's check here. Easy, need to practice. That's good because uh, I find that uh, initially, normally when I, uh, when we teach this uh, method, a lot of people find it very difficult to squat down because uh, this squatting exercise is, uh, is the, not something that we do every day. Okay, so it's always uh, we, we seldom squat down all the way unless of course you go to the gym and then you do you 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 do the the weight 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 bearing exercise okay so uh so i think i don't have time to show another video i just want to show the uh and with the last uh with the same uh a uh, phrase from Huang uh, Tine Jing about the preservation of health. So it says that the ancient people who understand Tao were able to find the right balance in health preservation through application and adjustment of the way of changes in yin and yang. It means a balancing everything in your life and practicing, what does it mean? Is practicing moderation in diet, regularity in work and rest, and avoidance of overexertion will rejuvenate and harmonize again here body and mind to live to 100 years old and above. And the important thing that I would like you to remember is what we have covered, the transmit qi method, the wall squat, the definition of qi gong. Remember the first thing, practice, practice, practice. Bring your mind inside or to tap chi with the various mode for different goals. And the important concept is where your mind reach, chi will reach. And when chi and blood circulation is clear and smooth, there will be no illnesses. So that's it. We have uh, some 15 minutes for question and answer. Okay, explanation is no meaningful and, and has great implication, okay. How can we, Okay, you want to, you have anything or I should, I should go through the chat myself? No, there was no question. Um, actually, the questions that were there, I asked already or you saw them. Um, oh. I'm just looking if I can find, I think Sushi is still here. You had some questions that you sent me via email, but now maybe you can also uh, post them here while I'm still looking if I can locate the... I think some they put the question in the chat. Uh. Yes, they just oh. put it in the chat. But so far you have answered every question they had. So we must encourage to ask more questions. Now you have the chance to ask Dr. Sarah everything. <laughs> How can we use Qigong to overcome emotional disturbances and improve overall emotional well-being? Okay, this is from Paul. Uh, okay, so um, you see a lot of the time uh, we have, uh, so you, can, you can actually uh, notice that some people can get uh, upset easily, but some people are calmer or don't get upset easily. So this one actually we can uh, we can explain from a lot of the time from the point of, from the Chinese medicine point. Some people you get upset easily is because the chi in your body is not enough. So you when your chi in the body is not enough, it cannot connect. You know, like cannot connect the in the, the connection in the in the brain. 
and then you tend to because you cannot connect then you tend to react but if your chi in the body can flow very smoothly and the calmly try you won't get upset so easily because internally you're very calm whatever you see uh, or you uh, you meet with you are able to in a, the, in a way you're able to control it because you internally you're very calm but so that's why we we always say that you practice you practice i mean maybe there are many other ways to practice to improve that uh, to meditation or whatever one of the way is to practice qigong because qigong is to help you to promote the smooth and clear circulation of your qi and your blood uh, and when we talk about qi actually it, because in the olden time they cannot see you know like the electrical impulse that run along the our nervous system or the little little uh, 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 particles articles that particles that run along our lymphatic system all these are actually uh, actually is the representation of different form of qi so when you're able to make sure that all these can flow smoothly without any blockage and, uh, and uh, clear and everything can come in and out easily, then automatically you will be a healthier and calmer person and you won't get, so emo you won't get emotional uh, so easily. I hope that uh, answered the question. And uh, is breathing important? Doing the exercise, uh, somebody uh, Lin asked. Uh, for now, uh, in this uh, practice, we don't have to really focus on your breathing. You just focus on what we have taught, and your breathing will become uh, will become uh, normal or calm naturally. You don't have to pay attention because the moment you pay more attention to it, then the moment you feel like you can become breathless. Because this, me uh, this method is not a breathing uh, method. Okay. And is it true we must practice Qigong exercise otherwise the benefits are lost? True or false? Of course, we have to practice uh, Qigong. If you don't practice, how can you promote the circulation? Is there em empirical evidence to quantify the effectiveness of Qigong? Uh, of course, it uh, uh, depends on you want to quantify the effectiveness of Qigong in what area. There are, uh, there are already many uh, uh, researchers uh, done about Qigong in various uh, aspects, I mean in uh, improving various aspects of health. So like for example, even like Tai Chi is one type of Qigong. For those who are interested, is nowadays it's very easy to find all this research or trial which have been uh, conducted. You just go to Google Scholar, you know, you just type in Google Scholar, and inside the Google Scholar, when you do search, then you can search anything. You just type in Tai Chi, you just type in Qi Gong, and then if you are talk, you are uh, you want to find out about cancer, then you can type in uh, Qi Gong and cancer, or you can type in Qi Gong and Alzheimer or Qigong and dementia or Tai Chi. There, there are so many um, information available in the internet now. Okay, other question may surface later. Okay. I see similarity between yoga and Qigong. Yes, actually, uh, Qigong and yoga is almost the same thing. That's why when I did my, when I did my, uh, when I did my research in Australia, I will tell people, oh, I'm doing a, a research on Qigong for cancer, uh, for insomnia with cancer patient. Then everybody will look at me in blank because they have never heard of Qigong. So I will have to explain to them, okay, it is the Chinese version of yoga. Oh, then they will nod their head and, uh, <laughs> and uh, oh, okay, so that they understand what it is. Of course, uh, there are many varieties, okay, uh, different versions. So, uh, as I mentioned, it depends on what you want to do. How to eliminate uh, the neck and shoulder pain? This one, actually, we have uh, uh, 
uh, different type of uh, qigong method that we can help to do that. But if you if you relax your body and when when you do the transmit qi, when it go through your shoulder and your and and your neck, you just pay attention to relax the shoulder and neck, and then let the qi flow flow through. It may help, but we have different uh, uh, practice or method for that. Can you explain what is mind in relation to Qi Kong? So the mind <coughs> Actually, uh, I don't have the, I, I didn't show the, the slide just now. Actually, the mind, the mind, when we talk about Qigong, when you practice Qigong, actually, you have to involve the mind. If you don't involve the mind, then it is not called Qigong. It's just called a normal physical exercise. So you need to use the mind when you practice the Qigong. So when we say Qigong means using the mind, remember the definition, internalize the mind, bring your mind inside, following the visualization method, bring your mind inside the body. That's why it's called mind-body exercise. You bring the mind inside the body, the chi will come inside the body, and at the same time, you also do some movement to let the chi circulate in the body. Other question. Is a squat exercise suitable for someone with fractured lower uh, back problem? Uh, of course, uh, this one you have to be, you have to be very careful because if you have back problem, then you have to make sure that you can uh, you have proper support and not to do it over overdo it. Okay, you can just do a little bit only, not too much. Uh, okay. Do we need to, I think the Q&A, do we need to be barefoot or can wear shoes? Uh, it's okay, you can, you can uh, be wear barefoot or you can wear shoes up to you as long as you're comfortable. In uh, this Qigong, we are not very concerned about, you know, some people say, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, get, you know, the, 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 the damn chi from the floor because here we are actually uh, practicing to tap hunyan chi. Okay, how many minutes should one practice? Normally for the normal, like our whole set of practice, we practice 30 minutes. But for what uh, we covered uh, today is a very simple practice. So you don't have to practice, uh, you don't have to practice uh, 30 minutes. You can just practice uh, how many according to the time you can you can afford and uh, but of course uh, for wall squat we always uh, encourage uh, to do at least 30 times uh, 30 times every uh, 30 times as a set but for beginners you don't have to you know immediately do 30 times otherwise you will get uh, body ache you can uh, start with you know five times and then you slowly increase it every day uh, what is a triple warmer? A triple warmer is actually uh, a part of the, our body system, which is like actually related to like just now when we show, we show the, the, the figure, the, the upper, middle and the lower part of the body that is like supposed to be a channel to let the chi flow through the whole body. Okay. Sorry, I think this is okay. Uh, is it better to do qigong outside the house, such as a park? And of of course, if you can afford to, then it's good to practice qigong outside as long as the weather is uh, comfortable and it's nice because it helps you to feel nicer. Because when we practice Qigong, the most important thing is that you have to feel very relaxed and uh, 
both mentally and physically, then when you practice, then it's more effective. So with the outside, uh, uh, maybe like in the park or garden, you'll find more relaxing, then it will help in, the, in your qigong. But if you are not able, you don't have the, I mean, the, the, the opportunity to go and uh, you know, practice outside, you can always practice at home. You just make sure that you are very relaxed and comfortable. Uh, so one more is your exercise, second exercise, the one of lifting the universe. I felt a sense of weightlessness as I was absorbing the chi into the body. Is this a normal phenomenon? Yes, uh, then it means that you are very relaxed. Then you can feel the calm and the, and the lightness of the practice. Okay, okay, anything else? Okay, no, I, I did not receive any other questions. So Sue was able to post them here inside the chat. That was great. And um, so one person just said, she entered the session or he very late. Is there any repeat of the session again or can I check the links over the internet? Yes, we are uploading everything on our YouTube channel. So just give me a couple of days and then you will see it. You can find it when you type in the search function on YouTube, uh, can survive Malaysia, then you will see our rainbow. And so you can find this very easily, yeah. All right, so then if you like to stop sharing, then I just give us our last screenshot so that people can also find. Um, okay, I'll stop sharing. Yes, so here you can find actually the info where you can find us on Facebook. We have a page can survive Malaysia and we also have a group. So for the group, you will be asked a few questions that you need to answer because we want to make sure that only the right people are in the group and all the information on terms of events. And of course we have also um, a website. And as you may have noticed, all of our events are free of charge. So, um, and we appreciate if you would like to make any donations and if it's just five or 10 ringgits um, towards uh, for us to keep up um, all these broadcasting services that also cost money. And since we're financing ourselves entirely from donations. So if you appreciate it, what you receive and also these free sessions, then we appreciate if you can make a donation all the information you will find on our website okay so any last uh, question no so everybody is thanking you so dr sarah that was really really great and insightful thank you very much and maybe we can even go on a further on a deepening of the the knowledge at some other time, right? Yes, of course. Yes. Okay, and thank you everyone. Yes. Okay. Have a good Saturday evening or wherever you are in the world, um, another time of the day. So, uh, and I see everyone back in, on September 5th, hopefully to our conference. This will be broadcasted entirely on our Facebook page live from 9 a.m. in the morning. So uh, even if you cannot make it live, of course it will be there to be shown also later. You can watch the replays, but if you want to be able to ask some questions, then you make sure you will be there um, on time. We will post the speaker panel and everything what's happening on that day very soon on the page. So please stay tuned. And thank you very much, everyone, for attending today's session. Have a good day. Bye-bye.